With the war over, it's time for us to rebuild, to take stock of our situation, and to return to our roots as explorers. We've recently noticed that a star in an unexplored system near Ferenginar has become unstable. There's nothing to indicate any change to its stellar life cycle, so this is a perfect opportunity for us to chart the system, investigate the star, and improve our understanding of what's happening. I want you to head up this investigation. Find out why this star is suddenly dying, and make sure it isn't going to be a threat to any nearby worlds or systems. And we got to go to DS9 to pick up a solar specialist, and then head towards the solar sp to the uh, the the unexplored star system near Fengina. And as as usual, we get the lithium, uh, the get the lithium and the experience and expertise, and we also pick up the uh, the. Quantum phase to we can pick up one of the quantum phase set, which I really should say we could cover in another episode because it's a four piece set and it's one of the one of the decent few sets you can pick up. I only pick up two I would dual beam and cover it if you so wish. So let's get to DS9. We should we pick up a stellar. Phenomena, especially the Cardassian status by the name of Tenor Zuval, is company at DS9, and we can be aboard one from the station. Right, notice we'll pick up the specialist when we reach DS9. So let's go to DS9. <laughs> And here we are outside the Stanley, and we've got been asked to pick up the scientist. Thank you for the pickup. I'm Tenora Zuva. Let's get started. My preliminary observations show some kind of unknown stellar problem. This unexplored system near Ferenginar is undergoing solar death. Basically, it's as if the star is going out suddenly, but there's no good reason why. We need to get close enough to take some readings. And see what we can figure out. And I see how um, depart from DS9. Revised message about half a year from this starship. No indication of what's causing stellar decay. It's no gas charge in the system. No signs of rocky planets other than the occasional movement for those Jovians. With looking at outside the up, up to range, we could probably get better resolution on the sensors if we notice a few kilometers closer. Okay, let's move in closer, get some readings on the start, and see if we can figure out figure this out. So that scanning in progress. Getting swamped with solar radiation. Try reducing the gain on your sensors. Is that? Scanning in progress. There are the air bands. Initial results don't make any sense. The star's core reactions are failing, but it still has so much mass that it should be conducting fusion. It's as if it suddenly decided that it was no longer going to do hydrogen fusion, just heavier fusion processes. Let's collect some stellar particles and see if we can find any clues with more detailed analysis. This kind of matter is ejected during corona events. We should be able to collect some with your ship's ram scopes if we head to one of the ejection zones. Set a plot, we'll set up a plot of location where we can take some samples. And there's one over here and there's a few of us fishing over the, around the places. Well, Yeah, it's the radio scan mini game. And we've collected it. Results are coming in now. 
This still isn't making any sense. It's as if the star's life cycle was suddenly accelerated somehow. But it never went through an expansion cycle. There's no good explanation for this yet. Maybe something else in the system caused it. What if this film affected others in the system as well? If this is system-wide, we should find evidence of similar problems with nuclear and chemical reactions in the system's gaseous bodies. There's a large amount of gaseous stellar matter further from the star. We should have no trouble checking that hypothesis. Is that cause for the, the next closest body in system? This is very strange. Usually nebulae are massive clouds between star systems. Finding a micronebula in system like this is quite rare. This may be the result of an event such as a cosmic string shearing through a gas giant and turning it back into particulate matter. I'll need some more readings to know for certain. Determine the best place to scan information. All the particulate matter will make your ship sensors unreliable beyond a few kilometers, and shields will be offline. The best we'll be able to do is to check small areas until we get close to something unusual. We should head to where the deionized particle density is highest. Right, switch to short wing scanners. As you can see here, the the, uh, the map up there is just is gone blank. Uh, well, we can use the hour. System to and that's of him. Indianized particles, that's fragments and trace amounts of inert materials. Because of low level discussions pushed from the input sessions. A number ship may have been here recently. Keep searching. If there's no ship here, we should see how see if they know anything. this big book. There it is. We need to get the educated particles and shields. Energy perhaps has incoming signals. Well, the phone's by on top of us. Yeah. is coming in now. Nothing unusual coming in from the nebula, but those Tholian ships were quite far from home. Unfortunately, they can't give us answers. Looks like there's some heavy ionization on the far side of the nebula, though. As if it's receiving some kind of reflected radiation from one of the gas giants. Stay close for that just gas giant. So we detected large asteroids around this gas giant, meaning a few metallic asteroids and some low-level radiation. Perhaps we could maybe some clues, but nothing concrete. Small dub debris we has to be for you. Nothing we can't clear up with our weapons. Just just to make sure we not miss. Now, pad stand by for evasive maneuvers. Set cost the radio this radio out <laughs> asteroid. Got three of them to scan. Scanning in progress. Actually, it's more with a few small deposits of iron and magnesium. Nothing particularly spe special. Let's move on. As a thing, 
a couple of them, plus pieces of tons of mercury. They are coming, but it didn't really give us any clues. Yeah, so. Let's get that asteroid. We could. There's a large amount of nickel, some titanium, and uh, uranium, and a lot of silicon. This, this is interesting. This asteroid has been evacuated. <laughs> Excavated. On one long one side, it looks like someone's used a primitive probe to crack open the asteroid and remove some of it. Low grade work is interesting. Nothing sophisticated. So it's been here, but it's not the type of technology that could explain the cell problems. Let's get close to that rest of the moon, see if we can find any other clues. So let's go to this. Go over here. Budging up to location for scanning the guest giants and the moons. So we're going to spray now, so and we're right there. This is interesting. We're picking up several moons uh, around this gas giant, and some of them are a a habitable. I mean, we're picking up com traffic. One of the moons is inhabited. Why didn't we pick up this up outside the sig signal system? The fa thousands of background signals in space set, we can, many from civilizations we haven't encountered yet. Since a pre preliminary long way scan so no. MRL class planets, nobody f thought it would be inhabited. Our computer just classified these signals as ambient background until we were right on top of the transmitters. Universal Translator is updating now. In the size of our very starship store bases, a few minor optical facilities, significant industrial infrastructure, 8 billion inhabitants. So I'm picking up a few low power warp trails. Every size of Starship, with a few handful of probes, the evidence they've come across, they've come across an early warp capable civilization here. Let's conduct a few more of us more scans. It's a warp capable Starship, then we make first contact. We don't want them to see our style. Greetings, unknown vessel. This is Administrator Kumarke. Please provide identification. This is this is skeleton of the USS Mediterranean. I present the Federation of Planets. Welcome to Lucari. Visitors here are rare, but we're always gratified by the chance to meet and exchange information with travelers. I regret that you have arrived at a difficult time. You may have noticed that our home star has become unstable. I'm leading a project to try to reignite the star. Unfortunately, we've already suffered severe disruptions, and we have a lot of problems to tackle right now. You've had visits of other species? Yes, we've previously had contact with the Zenkethi and the Ferengi. We've heard a bit about the Deferi and the Breen, but they haven't ever been to our system. Our home world provides for all of our raw material needs, along with a few mining outposts around the asteroids and the gas giant. We've never had a compelling need to engage in space exploration. And now that our sun is going out, we're scrambling everything we've got to see if we can find a solution or a way to evacuate at least a few of our people. We noticed that the Pro-Pro-Rio staff came to investigate why this is happening. These problems started only recently, just a few days ago. Our astronomers noted a significant shift in the star's output, and now it looks like it's guttering and dying. If we can't solve this problem, it's the end of our species. I'm the project leader for our solar probe team. We're going to try to restart fusion with a quantum chromodynamic accretion burst, but honestly, this is a colossal problem, and it may be beyond us. My ship is part of a larger fleet. We may have advanced technology that, that we may, may that we may be able to help you. We have a solar 
probe ready that contains the booster module that needs to be fired into the star. It's capable of warp two. There's a problem, though. The probe's remote navigation systems don't work. All of the interference from the solar flaring and guttering is blocking the signal. Could your ship get a trajectory plot so that we could set a pre-programmed course? We'll look into it. We can use our astrometric computer to build a plot. And let's just just our trajectory. Now, now the, see here we got got another number thing. So you got to have to go up or down. And this time it's down on both of them. I think. Down, up, left of me. That looks right. So let's do it just see now and split it straight to the plot. Boop, boom, and straight to plot two and. We're getting your telemetry now. I'll have my engineers prepare the probe. Let's see if this works. Nothing to worry about. Just the future of my planet. We'll all position for you to launch the probe. The probe's made it out of orbit. Engaging secondary boosters to head out of planetary range. This is Hitting full pin. Checking the. The probe is arriving at the solar corona. Deploying chromodynamic boost. No effect. It didn't work. Repeat. Well, it didn't work. That was our one shot. Thank you for trying to help. I'm not sure what to try next. Maybe we can evacuate a few people. I'm not going to give up. But the situation is grim. If your people can offer any other help, we would welcome it. But I just don't see a way to relocate eight billion people in the next few hours. We're not necessarily out of solutions. We might still find a way to reconnect the star. An unknown vessels arrived and spawned. I can't even see it from here. Um, we can't get any readings of the interior, so let's sell this new ship. My name is Cal Dano. Looks like I've arrived at the perfect time. I'm here to help with the problem with this star. I'm a scientist, and I have some specialized knowledge that can help. It's nice to meet you, Cal. Your help will be appreciated. With apologies for the interruption, this is my home star. My people are the ones at risk here. If you have some way to reverse this process, my people should be involved. Agreed. Since no other solutions have been presented themselves, we should at least hear him out. All right. I'm willing to do so. But it will take me a little while to get a shuttle out there. As you might imagine, things are a little hectic over here right now. Don't worry. We won't need a shuttle. You won't be able to get a lock on my ship interior due to the subspace manifolds. I'll go ahead and bring you aboard. Alright, uh, ready to for transport. Welcome aboard. I'm Cal Dano. You... You moved me here without crossing the intervening space! You have quantum teleportation technology! Yes. <laughs> we call it a transporter. It has a limited range, but it's useful for going from surface to ship. Impossible! This, this ship's interior is massive, even though it's no bigger than a shuttle. My ship uses compactified subspace folds. It's bigger on the inside. Right now we have bigger issues to handle. Administrator Kamerke. This is all quite overwhelming. This Caldano person is another stranger from somewhere else. 
And you're here to help with our dying star? We came to investigate the star and and now we're and that we're now involved. <clears throat> oh. Yes, I suppose I can see how a star suddenly dying might attract someone's attention. Normally, my people are explorers and we would open diplomatic relations to engage in first contact, but this isn't a normal situation. It's an odd coincidence. We'd probably never have met if it weren't for the trouble with the star. My people have never really had any desire to go exploring out there. We've sent a few probes and met a couple of neighbours, but we're happy at home and we have what we need, so why risk it? I guess this crisis answers that question. The galaxy is bigger than us, and to survive we need to look past just our home world. The United Federation of Planets makes exploration and peaceful contact with new species is one of its primary missions. It sounds like you have a lot of experience in meeting other kinds of people. Maybe if we survive this, we can take the chance and learn more about each other. To talk about what we might have in common and what we have to offer. I'm sure, sure my people will want to open relations. Your experience here will make your natural choice for, to participate in those discussions. What can I do to help? My home is at risk. I want to do something to be involved in solving this problem. Now, this is actually a... Uh, a piggy on choice. None of these have actually caused many big chip difference, but we're going to give Kimaki stay with us. Now, that now. Welcome to my ship. Don't be alarmed. This vessel is from the 31st century, and it has some technology you may not recognize yet. I can assure you, though, that I'm here to help. I suppose why I wasn't able to scan your ship, scan, scan for your ship all, or how you have technology that can repair dying star. Correct. I'm associated with the temporal division of. Well, let's just say that I'm an ally from the future, and I'm here to save the Lucari Star. This involves changing the time stream. I've had enough of that recently. No, no, I'm trying to prevent changes. Someone's tampered with this star. It's not supposed to die out here. The Lucari don't disappear today, at least not if we have any say in it. I have some technology that can help, but we'll need to rework it in order to repair the star's fusion processes. What I need you to do is help me align this matrix to match the star's original spectrum. Can you explain in more detail? This matrix can adjust quantum induction fields, but restarting stellar processes isn't its normal use. This task should be simple. Go to each console and adjust the intensity of each color spectrum in the mix. When you have the right mix, the matrix on the center console should match the original color of the star. Got it. I'll regulate the device's main power state from this console. And we're going to come over here and adjust this blue spectrum. And we're high and there's another decrease until at least this time you're crazy and lock in as soon as you're in the right zone. So I'm scanning, while scanning, I got some data on Cardano. It's kind of surprising. He seems to be a hybrid of human and Vulcan and a small amount of DNA people from this world. Apparently, at some future date, look out, these people, the Lucari, have struck a tail with the rest of the galaxy. So it's not just protecting his planet, it's protecting his own ancestors from an illicit. <laughs> Spins rise, it just means he's probably more reliable. Let's finish repairing the star. And I'm going to drop this here. You, uh, 
That's only because I know it's coming up. So let's adjust this red spectrum and we're going to decrease it again this time around. And like it, Tim. Sounds like whoever tried to destabilize the Lucari stars decided to come knocking. Let's see. They're packing a real wallop! Shields just went down! We have incoming! Weapons ready. Prepared to repel borders. What are those things? Tholians? Tholians! Keep them away! I need to finish these computations! I have the device shielded in a force field, but I can't deploy it until these Tholians are out of the way. Shields are back up! They shouldn't be able to get any more boarding parties over. So let's go and check check Cal. We've got a breather. Now I just have to charge the device and prepare it for use. In just a few minutes, it'll propagate a quantum wave shift that should correct the star's stalled fusion process. You should head back to your ship, and I'll send the administrator back home. Uh, let's, yeah, let's return to our ship then. The device is charging. We should be just a few minutes away from repairing the star now. Standing by. Give us the task, you doubt. Mm. I've heard that before. Have a what my quantum main You will surrender to the talks you have, or you will be destroyed. Up in the past. For more time. You said, uh, 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 weapons of a ship in a of a shuttle. Yeah, okay. Turning to normal. We disabled it. The shortwave should be better 
barely noticeable by the Lucari. Some of those ships have just arrived at our home system. They're attacking our home world. We don't have any way to repel starships like this. Please help us. Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, dear. Please, you have to stop them. We don't have any warships to face them. Thanks for the save, but the Tholians managed to steal the Tox Utat while they had my ship whipped. That must have been their plan all along. My data suggests that the Tholians used a Trilithium warhead to destabilize the star. But the amount of resources needed to build such a weapon makes it inefficient, to say the least. No, I suspect that somehow they knew that I'd come here to save this star, and that I would bring the Tox Utat. Fortunately, the Lucari star is safe. However, nobody else will be as long as the Tholians have that device. They could use it to snuff out or destabilize stars anywhere they want. We'll have to get get it back from them. That means we'll have to figure out the next target. I have some thoughts on that, but I will need to do some calculations. These events and the Tox Utah itself are tied up in the temporal cold war. The Tholians may not care, but by using the Tox Utat, they risk distorting the timeline by wiping out civilizations that are supposed to survive into the future, such as the Lucari. I'll be in touch. At least now the Lucari will have a promising future. Understood. Yaldano is correct. You have preserved our future. My people will be forever grateful, not to mention my personal gratitude, of course. I think we have a bright future ahead of us, if you'll forgive my play on words. I am eager to see where it leads. Thank you once again. Maybe we'll, we'll contact you soon. We have many matters to discuss. I wish I could ask you about your science, your trade, your society. But I suppose there will be time for all of that now that our crisis has been averted. First contact with another species is one of the, our important duties. And it's a meeting the show promise for a state of culture and knowledge. I think our friend the administrator here is going to need a ride home. Would you mind? If you'll pick her up and take her home, I'll start looking for more data about the Tholian's plan. We will be with you shortly. There's that Cardano ship. Pick up. Come okay. I have collected an amazing amount of information about what happened to this star. Thank you for bringing me along. Once we're back in Allied space, I'll take a shuttle home. Yeah, so, just put in. Come on. Means we come on, okay. Home. The first contest with the Lucari has been got off to a reasonable start. Now we just hope that the phones show up again with the Toxitat and we can stop them doing anything disastrous. We're we ready to leave the system on your eyes. Okay, let's go. Contact is a significant event for the Federation. We will be glad to open a dialogue with the Lucari people. Unfortunately, the loss of the Tox Utat is troubling. We
We have some reports about this device from when Jean-Luc Picard encountered it on Ryza in 2366. And obviously, we can't let the Tholians keep a piece of future technology that can destabilize stars. We'll have to deal with that later. And we're done. And as you see, we get used to get the use the ex experience and expertise with Glyphimar. And we get a choice of five or six different items. So we get the, f the first of the items is the quantum phase torpedo. This has a shield drain effect at 12 at two kilometers, and then you can and using high yield up torpedo spread will boost that to four kilometers. Very nice. The the quantum phase converter gives additional phase power, very and also has a boost your sh shield sh drain power, which can boost the sh shield drain power of the we of weapons in this set. And there has automatic restarts on arcs just to keep you keep your yourself alive if you use, use the science character, or just want to keep your heals alive. And you can always pick up the quantum phase beam away or the quantum phase, phase dual cannons, and you can get pick, and you'll be able to pick up. This has a unit two two mod uh, two two point five countries of, of effects. One of them is to dis is the standard phaser, which is disabled in your substitution for five seconds, or you can or it will train a good chunk of sh shield dam damage at the same time. And that, and if you d don't want any of those, you can always pick up the dual beam ray and the turret. This has been it. I'm Mike Shake Writer. See you next time. And we'll be covering the quarter phase set in a lot more detail.